Yeah, this is as close as we have been able to get all day to where this chase ended. I'm actually standing on MC85, and right behind me there is Cotton Lane. Let me move out of the way so you can see the truck that was involved in this chase. We're talking about a white work truck with a flatbed. Now, what we know so far, as you mentioned, is that according to Phoenix Police, just after 10 o'clock this morning, the truck was reported stolen from a business near 6th Street and Watkins. Now, things unfolded very quickly from there. The stolen vehicle and the suspect ended up on Cotton Lane and MC 85 where the man made a U-turn and rammed into a police vehicle. By this time, the suspect had already hit several other cop cars and drivers on the road. The truck comes to a stop. You can see dozens of officers on scene with their weapons drawn. Approaching the vehicle, the suspect sticks his hands out through the windows and begins to wave them. It appears as though he was about to surrender. But then the car begins to move again, and the officers go in full force. Cops surround the truck, even try to stop it from rolling forward as a suspect is dragged out and placed on the ground. He's eventually transported to the hospital. Well, we got here about 10 minutes ago. The smoke was really thick, really black. We were actually on our way to the station when we saw this. It was rushed over here. I'm 19th Avenue in Grand, and I'm told the fire is at 21st Avenue in Grand. We're here with an eyewitness. We watched it all unfold from the very beginning. Lisette Martinez is down there with that. Lisette. Mark, never a dull moment outside of the Maricopa County Courthouse. As you mentioned, spectators eagerly anticipating that verdict. Justice for Travis. Did you get a chance to look into her eyes? Did you get a chance to look she wouldn't look at it. This was the big hump for them, uh, Lisette, do you think, is just seeing justice prevail in, in terms of a guilty verdict for Jody Arias? Absolutely. They have been waiting for this day for a very long time, and even though in their hearts they knew that she was guilty, you never know how a jury is going to react to what they see and what they hear inside of that courtroom. So they tell me that they were very nervous all day today, yesterday, since this jury began to deliberate. So one of the most touching moments was the slideshow of pictures of the 19 heroes. To see their smiles ma magnified on those large TVs out here, to see pictures of them with their kids and their loved ones and doing things that they like to do when they were still alive was really, really difficult. As large crowds gathered outside Tim's Toyota Center, John Serlis did his best to honor the 19 fallen firefighters of the Granite Mountain Hotshot Crew. I know everybody wants to give what they can. John spent the day painting hearts on everyone who wanted the marking in memory of the brave firemen. Even I couldn't resist the gesture as this Prescott native spoke of his heartbreak for the victims' families. Little kids that are, you know, lost their dads and wives that lost their husbands. And you can talk about it, but you can't really understand it until it happens. So Lisette Martinez, she's right in the middle of it. Yes, Mark, a Phoenix police, a Phoenix police officer just approached some of the people that are sitting on the street on, on Central Avenue and he told them they would be subject to arrest if they do not get up off the street and move on to the sidewalk. We, we can see someone right now that is being picked up. You can see that person right there. We are being pushed out of the street by, by cops. Even the media is being pushed out right now. Things are very hectic. Now, during today's march, you guys went to the 4th Avenue jail and you went to the police department. A rising star in the boxing world with his sights set on the 2016 Olympics. Today, all that's left of that dream are tears and the desire to find those responsible. It hurts me so much. They have destroyed my life. I was always with him. He was my baby, my son. He was different than everyone else. One of the youngest victims, a three-year-old little girl, is out of surgery tonight and recovering here at Maricopa Medical Center, surrounded by her family, a family that has had to split their time between three different hospitals to tend to their loved ones as they prepare for funeral arrangements. The oldest one has, um, she's bleeding inside her head um, and her liver and her kidney is messing up.
Can you please hurry and get somebody over here? It began with a 911 call the morning of April 21st, 2012. Six-year-old Isabel Celis was missing. Her father says taken from her room never to be seen again. Now nearly a year after her disappearance, the frustration is still mounting. We are living this nightmare every moment of every day. I'm in front of the home where Isabel was taken from. This is where she was last seen by her family sleeping in her room. Now, a year later and over a million dollars spent on her search, investigators continue to follow leads. The victims in this case are able to count their blessings this afternoon, knowing that the situation could have been much worse. Their main focus right now is to help authorities catch the suspects before someone else is hurt. She got out the car. And what happened then? And he apparently didn't like it or whatever. She said, if you're going to try to rob me, you better shoot me. Said Martinez continues our coverage. Someone who was shot in front of my house is laying in the street. Did you see who shot him? What's your no, address? No, no. I was sitting in my backyard. I heard about four gunshots. I called my dogs in the house and I looked out my front gate and there's a man laying in the street. There's blood all around him. It was November 7, 2010, about 7.45 in the morning. It was a Sunday early morning when uh, Jonathan went out jogging. 13-year-old Jonathan Garcia Valladares was laying face down on the pavement near 26th Street in Thomas. Frantic neighbors rushed to his aid, but it was too late. He was already dead. He's not reacting. He's lying in a pool of blood that's running down the street. According to his stepfather, Jonathan made a call to him just minutes before he died. He was out jogging in the neighborhood. The teen had recently showed an interest in losing weight. He was always looking to have fun, looking to have fun, looking, looking to do things things, wanted to be outside, wanted to play. He was very outdoors. Jonathan had no known enemies, according to police. He was an excellent student and a great son. His murder puzzled detectives from the start. Was he a mistaken identity? Was this actually supposed to be someone else? Police reports show six shell casings were found around the body. The victim's pan pockets had been pulled out, and the only thing that appears to have been taken from the victim was his cell phone. One witness remembers hearing voices urging someone to get into a car. Another witness saw a suspicious man walking away from the victim and followed in his car as he called 911. And what, what, is, what is he doing, sir? He's walking down the street. I think he's the guy who shot... The guy that's waiting on front of my house. But nearly three years later, the investigation has gone cold. Mark, some of those who were released after the raid over the weekend came together this morning. They were speaking up as a unit. They say that those who are being federally charged and are behind bars still are not the only ones who broke the law. The company knew everything about it. They know about uh, us. They know our real names. They know our uh, fake names. They uh, sometimes they gave us. Sergio Herrera was one of hundreds arrested over the weekend during a federal raid at Danny's car wash locations across the valley. The undocumented immigrant was detained and later released after talking to ICE agents about how he was able to get and keep a job with the company for more than eight years. Then they give us papers. So they they give us the uh, specific uh, information uh, we need to to work with the company. Like what? Well, we're talking about the um, social security numbers and the uh, fake IDs and stuff like that. Herrera says the matter was handled very quietly within the company and upper level executives, mostly using a third party. Right now, I'm at the Levine District Office. Behind me, you can see a bus yard. Let me move out of the way so you can get a better look. This is where school buses park when children are at school. This is also where that four year old boy was found after his teacher reported him absent. Video showing four-year-old Floyd Smith alone on a school bus outraged the community. Then 12 News uncovered even more concerning video of transportation staff at Levine Unified School District behaving badly. A bus driver caught allowing children to perform spec checks and another driver left the driver's seat unattended with the motor running. But come Monday, things are going to change. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the bus and we're going to try to simulate a failure. Eric Kissel is the new transportation coordinator for the Levine School District. He's implementing the child checkmate system, which gives drivers 30 seconds to get to the back of the bus after a stop. If we were to step off the bus and just walk away, 
Now the system's going to alert, I mean, audibly outside. To avoid setting off the alarm, the driver must follow protocol. Come to the back of the bus. The alarm goes off once the checkmate button is pushed. So now I've got a couple great things to do. I look for any children that may have fallen, fallen asleep or stayed behind. Security cameras have been upgraded on the buses, which will also be equipped with a GPS system that will track the driver's actual route versus their intended route to ensure children like Floyd aren't dropped off at the wrong stop. A new electronic vehicle inspection reporting system will also be installed. We can actually know that they physically went through and did all their pre-trip in inspections.